Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to the second instalment of my season in the Ultimate Karting Championship. Oh, yeah! Last time out of Will to Mill, I managed to send myself into the Shadow Realm in truly horrific style. But after a swift recovery, we find ourselves out for round number two. On Thursday, I made the seven hour journey up to Cumbria to get to Raura, which is a track I have never been to before. So there'll be a lot of learning to do for this one. Beautiful circuit, beautiful location. And hopefully I won't put myself in the nearby lake. Not everything was going to go to plan this weekend. If you're here for the Fanatec giveaway, you're in luck. We do have more items to give away for this video. But in the meantime, let's kick things off on the Friday with my very first laps around the circuit. Okay, these are my first ever laps around Raura. Let's go and do it. Now, of course, there's only so much you can learn from an online video, such as watching this one. Or what I did before I came here, I watched a fair few Raura videos uh, in X30. But of course, as I said, there's not a huge amount you can learn. You do really do just have to get out there on the track yourself and see what you can learn. So these are my first ever laps around the track. From what I could tell before coming here, it's a very cool circuit. But I wasn't expecting just how good it would be. And you've got this... Uh, cliff face corner at the back end of the circuit goes into this tight chicane which you really have to launch the curbs on and it is a physical challenge especially those curbs at the back there then you come down the hill into the final sequence a couple of corners here and then this is the final corner here this this long looping right hander and that was my first ever lap but um, a little bit deeper into the session and we've already got a fair amount of carnage through turn one very much a pinch point uh, is turn one it's a fairly tight chicane like blind up a hill basically the old rouge of karting if you like holly green all going past and that's really the theme of this lots of faster drivers going through see just how much speed he carries through that first chicane we're just trying to learn as much as possible as we can okay, from these guys uh, Cart really bouncing horrifically then and, and really not getting a good run through that chicane that time around so it wasn't a perfect day by any means i was making a fair few mistakes but by the uh, by the, towards the latter stages of the of the day beginning to overtake some people and you know you just find your place in the weekend you find your your, your place in the pack and you begin to realize okay we, we might be quicker than these guys but slower than these guys and at least i wasn't the slowest that's a good sign especially at a track you've never been to before um, so making a meal of that back chicane once again uh, but coming down the hill got overtaken here by number 74 Tom Fleming, another DHR driver at uh, Dan Holland Racing and this was a good thing about this weekend because at Walter Mill at the previous round I was the only senior X30 driver for DHR whereas this weekend I had three others, there was four of us in total and that meant I had three other drivers to learn from, to get data from, to talk with about uh, the best way to navigate the circuit. And that really does help a lot in, in any form of motorsport, just really talking to other people, just to really learn as much as possible. So it's really good to have a few other drivers in the awning who I could speak to and learn from. Uh, later on in the day, you can see here, it wasn't too bad. You know, I felt like uh, the pace... You know, obviously I wasn't on the pace with the absolute quickest guys at this point, but I was in a battle with people. I was I was in a fair fight with people who were in the midfield at Wilton Mill. So I wasn't quite in the midfield at Wilton. And therefore that was a good sign. That was a good progress, I think. And before you know it, Friday was over. My first test day at the circuit. It's a beautiful circuit, great layout, really good fun. And that was the end of my first day at Raura. Okay, so we arrive back at the track on Saturday morning. We have three more practice sessions just to try to get close to the limit. We did have to weld our car, or part of it anyway, because uh, one of these brackets actually snapped on the Friday. 
and uh, really just showing how physical this track is on both the driver and on the cart. So we head out, have a bit of a chat again with Tom about where we can gain, what we can do to get good. Um, there's only a few sessions, so three sessions before our first race on Saturday. And I suppose not a huge amount of time to really nail a circuit. Of course, you know, not going around completely slowly, but you really do have to put in a lot of laps to uh, really just eke out those last few tenths. And actually, there's not too, it's not too dissimilar from sim racing. You know, you, you might be able to do a decent lap on a track you've never driven before. But to really get those last tenths, you do have to put in a lot of practice just to really perfect your lines and just really know exactly where you're accelerating and where you're braking and all these little details. And uh, Tom goes flying through there at turn one. And by this point of the weekend, he's, he's already on it. He's flying. And you see here, it's only been half a lap. And he's already gapped me by a couple of, probably about half a second already. And just really trying to take note as much as possible he's already gone so it's not like I can really have a close follow and really try to analyze exactly what he's doing but uh, but uh, by looking at the data I think for me the main thing was really on the brakes uh, these guys really really comfortable on the brakes and uh, in many ways these x30s are very very strange you do have to go in very hot on the front end to get them to work you have to almost go in faster and later than you think you should then the car actually works better. It's kind of a weird feeling. So that was the end of our first session of the Saturday. And even though Tom went flying past us and left us for dead, I, I would still say we we're improving. It was good to go back to the awning. And, well, look at him overtaking me again on the video. But look at the video of, of his perspective, my perspective, the other drivers, and just really uh, learn um, exactly what you're doing wrong. And look at the telemetry as well, because you could see exactly the GPS traces. You see your brake traces as well. You see which part of the lap you're losing, which corners you're losing on. And this is a, this is a really good tool, um, uh, as well as, as Sean telling me, you know, the best lines I should be taking and, and what I was doing wrong. So, you know, in order to get quick quicker in a car, you do have to sort of, you do just have to single out the things you're doing wrong and accept that you are doing things wrong and then just really try to work on it in the next session. Uh, our mascot Jacob there giving us the thumbs up. Hopefully that's worth a couple of tenths because we're going to need it. Um, ahead of our final practice before our first race. So we have one last chance here just to, try, uh, tr just to try to improve at this circuit. And this time I thought I'd go out in a pack. A lot of the sessions before this, I was going out on my own and just try to focus on my lines and not really worry about anyone else. But at a race weekend, it is a good idea to get out in the pack. Just see where you are. See where you're at. Am I quicker than these guys? Am I slower? Who, who am I quicker than? Who am I slower than? And to be honest, I was slower than most of them. Which is to be expected. But it's always good just to get a good uh, barometer of where you're at. And uh, at this, uh, on this session, I was, I was out here behind Caleb Marshall, another DHR driver. And you see us... Uh, very much keeping with him but this has never been the problem uh, driving on the colder tires at the beginning of a session it's always sort of the second half of the race or second half of the session where the tires get warm and that's where the problems seem to begin um, but that's why you just got to get there and practice as much as possible and just really learn the, the nuances of the way that these carts operate the way that the tires work uh, a little bit uh, later into that session um, another DHR driver uh, Kian Shields goes through very very fast indeed we're going to try and follow him learn a thing or two you see just how good he is on the brakes through that hairpin fully just gained a cart length through there and then look at the exit speed here he gets a really good run off of that chicane fully gains another cart length or two and we're just taking these things in you know we're just taking notes here taking mental notes where are they gaining and why are they gaining what are they doing differently to me and um just trying to single out the things that they're doing better and the things that you can improve on and uh, for me we kind of mentioned it but a lot of it was the brakes and a fair amount of the corner exits I was just not quite getting on the powers early as, as I could have done 
Um, and you see here, over the curb, not quite as smooth as the other guys. They're really, really holding the wheel a lot tighter, I would I would presume, just to keep the cart from uh, rotating in the wrong way. You want to keep it dead straight over that chicane. Um, but there we go, the end of our practice. We have nowhere left to hide now, going into our first race. One last thing to do, though, get the cart and driver weighed. Limit is 162. We're weighing in here at 166.8 last time at a Wilton it was 168 point something so we have saved a few kilos we are getting towards that weight limit which is a good sign yeah felt good um I feel a bit more competitive here um like at Wilton the midfield I wasn't quite in it but here I think I can be Okay, viewers. So, of course, Fanatec, they've joined us for the year and they're going to be giving away loads of free items. And uh, last time out, we gave away the Formula One rim. This time's the McLaren V2 rim, uh, which is one of these fine things here. Now, for your chance to win it, all you have to do, head over to my Instagram, follow me, of course, obviously, and then uh, just leave a comment on this post. I'll link it down below. And then, yeah, just leave a comment. I'll draw a winner next week. So, good luck. The last thing to do before the racing began was to enter our scrutineering card. You have to enter your engine, chassis and tyre numbers. They check uh, the tyres uh, with all the uh, barcodes. That was the last thing to do before the racing began. Yeah, so still a few temps off where I ideally need to be. Been looking at the data. Just need to work on the brakes a bit. But I think I could have a good fight in the middle here somewhere potentially get a couple of top tens you know Wilton was horrific we didn't get into the top ten at all or well, we might be able to do it here the, these x30s are very very fiddly it's very easy to do something wrong and I'm doing quite a few things wrong <laughs> I've got uh, Tom Tom Fleming really quick driver giving me a lot of guidance I've got Sean of, of course on the data giving us sort of lots of uh, information about that a lot of help a lot of help here in DHR um, I just need to do them some justice and actually bring home some decent results. Where are we going and why? Yeah, we're just going to head up to turn one, just have a look at how the starts go. I've never started here, I've never driven here in a, in a race, so I don't know what a start is going to be like. I headed up to turn one just to watch some of the starts. I'd never started a race here at Rauwra before, so it's a really good idea just to just to watch some of the other, other drivers start their races. There's of course two lanes as you cross the line. We want to work out if the left or the right is better. Do you want to tuck in? Should you fight it? Should you not? Lots of little things you want to work out. But of course, the main thing really is just to go in and use your instincts. There's, no, uh, there's only so much planning you can do for a race start. All right, here we go. Race number one. 14th on the grid. Let's go and do it. Okay, here we go. Race number one. Heat number one. We have three heats. And you'll start one at the back, one in the middle, one at the front. This is our back start, 14th out of 19. Put myself on the grass there. I don't know what I'm doing. Now, first race, going into the unknown. I don't know what a race pans out like here. So all we can do is just rely on our instinct, do our best, and give it a jolly good go. That's all we can do, really, isn't it? And... Uh, but by virtue of starting on the outside, you do have quite a poor run around this final corner. And quite frustrating, the driver in front did leave a massive gap to the car in front, lose a couple of positions immediately because of that. Then gain them back as there was a bit of a pile up through the first corner. Uh, so at this point here, up into 14th, well, actually, that's where we were supposed to start. So I'm back to where I started pretty much. I have to go around the outside and then just tuck back in behind Derek Morgan into the second hairpin. And then Kian Shields comes flying around the outside pulls off a very nice move to be fair it's hard to know which side to cover sometimes you go to the, the outside that's got to be your inside but there you go and then through here we go flying into a cone not going to plan at all we just got stuck on ollie green all basically and that really is a big pinch point on the lap that uh that cliff face hairpin and unfortunately we've got tangled with another driver you see just how far back we are there we are and that's put us right off the back of the pack. Now in 18th, there was one retirement. So not quite dead last. 
But I do need to salvage something if possible as we head on to lap number two. Not many laps within which to do it. I'm going to try to reel in these guys if I can. By the start of lap eight, I could see I was getting closer. I was definitely quicker than these couple of guys here at the back of the pack. So I knew that I could still gain a couple of positions, even if we were running out of laps. Through the first hairpin, running out nicely onto the extra tarmac, and then coming up towards the hairpin two. They are fighting, so I'm going to get even closer every time they do that. And then coming up towards this third hairpin, the cliff face corner, the best overtaking opportunity on the lap. Chuck it up the inside, scare him off the apex, and get the position done. Up into 17th, but I'm sure we can go better than that. We still have four laps left to go after this one one potentially two moves left in our locker here not close enough to go for a move into the final corner I have to settle in behind there are a fair few hairpins here within which you can just send it late on the brakes often here i would say from my experience of karting you don't always want to send it on the first hairpin because there's two hairpins for them with, uh, to you know to lunge you back on sometimes you want to wait for the last one and they can't reply that's exactly what we're going to do. We did actually bump him through the first hairpin. Get a good launch off the second. And coming up towards the third one, space opens up. Boom. Send up the inside. And then now we can't really reply for at least a couple of corners. We move up into 16th. Halfway through lap number 9. This is lap number 12 then. And we did get a lot closer to the driver in front for 15th. And I'm just trying to put myself within range of an overtake get into that striking distance by the time we get into the third hairpin and I would say that's probably a little bit too far back to go for the dive bomb but um, yeah it was definitely a bit too far back doesn't that quite happen all I can do really is get a little bit closer and then go for a move on the final corner which is just about an overtaking opportunity and seeing it was the final lap and seeing as I need to create content I thought you know what let's just go for it send it up the inside and the space was given thankfully and we get it on the final corner of the final lap we gain a position so even though that race started pretty horrifically it ended in quite a cool fashion unfortunately we got a five second penalty for drop nose cone but that was the end of my first race at Rauber. absolute send last corner mate yeah absolute send big send it had to be done it had to be done just had an incident down at the chicane and then just did all I could to fight back basically. Yeah, me at Jaguar. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, shit. 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 Oh, I made a bargain with my cameraman Jamie that if he beat me I would have to delete my channel. So there was a lot riding on this. The crowd was gathering in anticipation of my lap around Interlagos on R Factor 2 in the Mercedes Formula 1 car. And after a couple of laps, I managed to put in, what was it, a 1 minute 10.2. And then Jamie tried to have a go. Let's see if he can beat me and end my career. What was it going to be? It was going to be a 110.8. So thankfully, my career remained intact. Unlucky, son. In a depressing turn of events, Super GT gets to keep his channel. Get in there, Lewis. P number two, um, starting fifth this time. I've got, a no uh, I've got a drop nose penalty there. For hitting the cone, I'm pretty sure. A bit annoying. Um, but yeah, starting fifth. We got a 46 free that one, a bit quicker than my. That's my quickest lap I've done so far this weekend. So if we can get a little bit quicker, then good stuff. So let's go and do it. All right, let's go. Heat number two. Let's try and get a little bit faster, as we say. Try and edge that lap time down. Of course, we're trying to get results, you know. But I think one of the overriding things for this season is just chipping away the time, getting faster, getting that lap time down. If we can do that then we're in a good place so here we go heat number two starting fifth a lot closer to the front this time and we just try and get into this race try and settle down and have a good one so through the final corner the race begins up into towards first corner 
See if we just maintain our position here in fifth, and we can. We keep our position, don't lose any, don't gain any, but that's all right. Now, coming up towards the first hairpin, Caden McQueen flying around the outside. This happened in the first race as well. Kind of hard to prevent that, but there we go, it happened. Down in towards the second hairpin, Caden again around the outside, and he's making that work. And uh, we're in sixth, our usual position. Let's try and hold it for a bit. Kean Shields goes flying around the outside, tries to tries that sensational move, doesn't quite work. He tucks in. That's perhaps what I could have done in the previous race rather than going in side by side with Ollie Greenall. Didn't work, and that's perhaps just the level of unex or inexperience around this track. You just learn when to tuck in, when to accept that you've lost a position, and that's just the things that you don't have if you come to a track for the first time. Up to the first corner, Kean Shields goes through from down into seventh. It's okay, we'll just try and tuck in behind him. See if we can um, follow him through. And he gets a really good launch off that corner there. Look at that. And then he's side by side with someone else coming into the second hairpin. He's going to get the cut back. He gets really good exits. And then we're going to try and get a move done here. Driver looking over his shoulder, number 16. But then he just leaves the door open going into the cliff face corner. So we send it. Got the inside. We're back into sixth place. Okay, this race is going rather well. Starting fifth. We've only lost one so far. So, could be a lot worse. Uh, at least we haven't smashed into a cone. That certainly doesn't help, does it, when you do that? So, going a lot better than the previous race. Up towards turn one, just try to get these tyres warmed up, trying to drive that a little bit differently. You do need to drive differently from the start of the race than you do at the end of the race. As the car behaviour changes, the tyres change, the dynamics of the car changes. Into towards hairpin two. We're going okay so far. Up behind Derek Morgan at this point in time, lap number three. And um, for those curious about the race length, it's, a, it's an eight minute race. Turns out on this occasion to be a 12 lapper. Winding downhill then into the right hand, a very fast corner there, so you can carry a lot of speed through there. Slightly slow for this left hand, a run, the extra tarmac there. Lots of people commenting about track limits. They, they weren't looking, they basically said, yeah, just whatever, you can just run all of the track limits there on the exit. And the, the same applies for the exit of the first hairpin, which is just coming up here. We go in, and then a cart appears on our inside. That's Tom Fleming. So you can run there beyond the white line. They don't really care. The race organisers, you're allowed to do it. Um, so we move down a position back into seventh. Tom really flying at this point. Up in towards the, the far hairpin. Try to learn a thing or two from him. The differences are so minor, but they really do add up over the course of a lap. And you see they're just gaining off the back of that, that hairpin. Um, another um, DHR driver goes through. Caleb Marshall goes through. I'm up. Uh, he's up into seven. I'm down into eight. And uh, you see here, lap five. By this point, the tyres have really warmed up. The first couple of laps are fine. But then it's by this sort of time into the race that things begin just slowly go downhill. And uh, by lap number six, getting overtaken here by Lewis, uh, Lucas Ellingham down into 11th. And even though I'm going backwards here, yes, I'm going backwards, but this might sound weird because this is um, a race where I'm just on the back foot getting overtaken. My lap time was good. Um, my lap time was better than it's ever been. So that does show the improvement. It's just one of those things, you know, if, um, if you're just a few tenths off and you're starting near the front, you are going to go backwards. There's not really much you can do about that. You can just defend every corner. You could white line every corner, but you're not going to make yourself very popular. And you are just probably going to get punted off, to be honest, because everyone will get sick of you. Uh, for me, it's really just a case of just try to learn, try to tuck in behind the other guys and just not, not do too much too stupid too soon. The end of our second race there, finished in 12th. Okay, we started 5th. And that might seem disappointing, but I was quite pleased uh, to not get a penalty there. But I was quite pleased with the improvement in the lap time. We were getting quicker. That's the good. That, that was the good upside to take from this race. I should, I should be playing for England, right? All right, that's the end of day one. I'm sat on...
the apex of turn one, which funnily enough, I kept missing. Probably my worst corner, this one. But we got, what was it? 17th and 12th. Doesn't sound all that great. The pace was actually not too bad. We're closer than we were at Wilton. That's a good thing. We are getting closer to the fast guys, but we're closer, we're getting there. If I can just chip away two more tenths, then I think I can have a really good fight with some some of the fast guys. So let's see how tomorrow goes. We'll try and do some more big sends as well. Rolling just when you have it. Okay, that can't seem to work. Welcome, uh, welcome back. We're on Sunday now. Uh, heat three. I'm starting 11th and then two five. Okay, race number three, heat number three. First race of Sunday. Now, this is where I made a serious error of judgment. And as a professional content creator, it's unforgivable because coming out of here on the warm up lap, you see my hand lean over to the camera and I turned it off because I thought it was off and I thought I was turning it on because I forgot that I turned it on, so I was turning it off. If that makes sense. So there's no GoPro footage for this one, annoyingly. We do thankfully have some exterior shots courtesy of cameraman Jamie. So we can have a brief look at what happened. We did get shuffled down at Hairpin 2 on the first lap. And you'll just have to believe me that that happened. We actually got a nice little move here done on the final corner. So it wasn't all doom and gloom in this one. This was the battle for the lead. Actually a very close fight there as you can see. Good stuff at the very front of the pack and then I turn up uh, a good while later where am I? Uh, there I am um, but yeah that was heat number three not the best race overall I'd say though oh tough race GoPro didn't turn on either Start was okay and then yeah got shunted at the second hairpin but I didn't have the speed anyway. So as I've mentioned one of the best things about having other teammates is that you can compare yourself and see what you're doing wrong and I wanted to do this comparison here between myself and Tom Fleming. So Tom you know very much a front runner in Senior X30. We start our laps here at the same time and this is the difference between a 45A and 46.4. Through the first chicane he gains maybe half a cart length or maybe a cart length into the first hairpin we we meet the apex near enough at the same time but he does carry more speed on the way out and then he's a much tidier on the wheel just look at the differences between the our, our steering input he gains a little bit more there um, i'm actually frustrated see, uh, see i raise my hand so he's he's turning is a lot smoother sort of one movement in one movement out whereas i'm a bit more busy on the wheel by this point here he's gained a little bit more it might not look much, but that is just a couple of tenths and it all adds up, especially over the course of 10, 14 minute race. It's a lot tidier on the input, on the way in, on the way out, on the brakes, on the throttle. Lots of things to tidy up. Across the line, 45.8. And then here I am just a little bit later with a 46.4. Very small, subtle differences, but that's all that matters in the world of motorsport. Because I'm a professional content creator, I didn't turn my GoPro camera on and the pace just wasn't quite there. I did speak with Sean about the telemetry. A couple of places to work on still, but now we've got the pre-final. I'll turn my camera on for this one, which will help. The main problem at the moment uh, that I'm worried about is the, is the fitness. This is the third day of karting. It does take it out of you. Um, at Wilton, there were some wet races, which kind of makes it a lot easier. But here, it's just being dry every day. Starting 15th, so, you know, we're gonna try and move forward from there. Just try and get our best lap time down. So far, I've done 46.2. That's my best lap time this weekend. If I can just get down to 46.0 or one, I'll be happy. Come on then, let's go and do it. So here's the lap times. Um, second quickest, uh, just that's career over. End the video, end the video. Did you have a go, Tom? I did have a go. How far off, sorry? Two seconds. I think I should stick to karting, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Even then. Yeah, stick to the karting, mate. <laughs> How are you doing today? Good? Shit. Oh. <laughs> that can't go in. Time for the pre-final now. Now, for this one, you start pretty much where you should be on the grid. 
There's no random grids for this one. We are going to be starting 15th out of 19. So yes, quite close towards the back. Courtesy of our results in the heats. So, 14 laps. Let's try and move forward at least in this one and see what we can do. Do gain a position through the first corner. Starts have never really typically been our problem. Lucas getting run wide there. And then into the first hairpin. Boom, we're up in the air. We're flying around into last place. Now, oh my goodness. Yeah, not an ideal scenario. I, I obviously, in hindsight, should be driving a little bit wider there, I suppose. And that is the risk you take by going to the outside. And I suppose this was quite similar to heat number one, where I dropped off to the back of the pack and just had to try and catch up and salvage a result. And this was no different. I had to do exactly the same thing here. By lap five, I caught up with a couple of drivers and uh, we actually gained a position there. That I think there's a retirement on the right-hand side. And um, we can just try and salvage some level of pride by not finishing dead last. And of course, treating it in many ways as a practice session. Every, every race for me is a practice session given our relative inexperience at the circuit. So space opens up here and I think it's time to press the send button and put up the inside. Another driver spun out there as well. So we gained actually two positions on that corner. But then there's two more drivers up in front. So we still have potential to gain a few more, maybe go up into 14th by the end of this race. Uh, by lap nine, we did catch up and we actually got into a nice little fight here. Uh, coming off the second hairpin, good launch. He looks over his shoulder, space opens up and I didn't quite fancy going into that gap. Perhaps could have done it, but we're just gonna wait for now and not do anything too stupid too soon. Um, by lap number 10 getting close again to the back of number 10 it goes narrow he's, he's certainly aware of my presence doesn't want me to get past just yet so we've got a few more laps left to try to get this move done and uh, move up into 15 We're following through the final couple of corners could send it there we're not going to do it any, anything too bad but he does because he drives a little bit too wide on the way out that's going to give me the inside coming up into towards turn one. We move up into 15th. Can we move up into 14th? If we catch up with the number 24. By lap 12, we did catch him up. And we gave us two laps to try to get past. Let's see if we can do it. Through turn number one up the hill. The blind, fast, sweeping corner. Making the most of the curves on the inside. Especially through the third apex. Getting a good run here on the exit getting certainly within range we're going to put ourselves up the inside we're going to go for it and send it full up the inside now of course by going for the move there you do put yourself into a vulnerable position going into this third corner so i go very narrow make sure we don't get re-overtaken and then from here it's just a case of just trying to settle in and trying to have a good couple of corners and break the, uh, or create a gap between yourself and the, and the drivers behind to make sure that they can't go for a reply as we come up to the final lap of the race. Now we had a good decent couple of corners there. Onto the final lap we go. Try and get turn one sorted. Not perfect, but it's good enough to get away from the guys behind. And then by the end of the race, on lap number 14, we're gonna finish in P14 as we round out the final turn in our pre-final. So, okay, not ideal to crash, but it was a semi-decent recovery from there. Probably a good job you didn't catch my live reaction just after the race because I really wasn't happy with that. Um, I just went like three, four times slower than before. Tires are going off, to be fair, but it wasn't a great race. It just feels like there's a bit of a golfing class. There's, there's all the, the guys that are out every week and it's hard to keep up with them. But that crash messed up that race, so we'll try. We'll go again in the final. Let's not have a crash at the start. And let's try and end this one on a positive note. Okay, the final race of the weekend. It was coming to a close, the day, the weekend. Uh, we had one last chance to try to get a decent result. Now, in that pre-final, I feel as though if I could have just had an okay start without crashing... I might have been in with a better chance. You know, if you're just in the hunt, if you're in with a chase with other drivers, you can get kind of pulled along a little bit. So I was just hoping that we can have a good start here 
tuck into the midfield and try to sort of get pulled along at their pace. We'll see if that could happen and um, try to finish this weekend with a good result. Luckily so far, we haven't put ourselves into the barrier um, at full speed like we did at Wilton. So that's always a good sign, of course. So that is, I suppose, some sign of improvement. Starting here in 14th, which is where we finished the pre-final. Let's go then, final race of the weekend. 20 laps this time around and just like the, just like the last race we're going to get a position at the beginning we're going to go to the inside this time play it safe let's not go to the outside and risk anything and we actually get a move done there on lucas ellingham he runs a little bit wide very narrow into heaven too lucas tries to fight around the outside doesn't quite work out for him go up the inside of jordan brown so started 14th now up into 11th gained four on this sorry three on this first lap that just shows how good my maths is. 15 minus... 14 minus 4 is 11, apparently. Coming down the hill. Okay. Can we just keep with these guys here? We're in a nice little fight with a couple of guys in front. Just try to stay in their toe. In the toe. And the fact that you're chasing someone really does help, I think, in karting. If you're lapping on your own, it's, it's a lot harder to set those laps. If you're just right up behind someone or not too far behind... It is often a bit easier to, to churn out some laps. Now, we do get dropped there through that first sector of the lap. But um, still not too bad by this point. Down the back straight, leaning forward, just trying to eke out every last tenth. Not quite using human DRS at this point, but perhaps I should be. With the chicane, not quite as smooth as you'd like. Down the hill, dropping down. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but it is so so cool driving down that hill towards the end of the lap They're running wide up in towards the final turn of lap number two it's only 10 percent of the race done it's quite a long race and um, unlike wilton every day every race was dry and it was quite hot so the physical factor was certainly beginning to come into play here by the end of the weekend and you know driving these carts it really does take it out of you especially when you're launching that curb on the back chicane Bit of a mistake there. Carry the speed through though on the power. And we're not getting completely dropped at this point uh, by number 48, Derek Morgan. So, I mean, that's a positive sign so far. Um, it could be a lot worse, I would say. So, even though it is difficult and we aren't, you know, it's not like we're winning, um, I would still say there are signs of improvement here compared to to the first round at Wilton Mill. On to lap number four. Sweeping through the first chicane and then towards the first hairpin. We do get overtaken here by Lucas who's just coming through after a fairly poor start. And you know, he points forward. You know, I wasn't going to go for a re-overtake on him anyway. We can try and tuck in behind and just try to get an edge a little bit closer towards the guys in front. And... Um, try to ideally as well pull away from the guys behind now this is lap number six going on to seven now you see the gap began to open up and we actually got shoved wide at the first corner in a very unfortunate move and we lose a couple of seconds from that your tires go really dirty you basically have no grip for a couple of corners when you go offline like that so we go down into 13th now and you see there's a lack of grip through the first and the second hairpin very noticeable um, by this point now, 14th, onto lap 9. My pace was really beginning to worryingly drop off and I got overtaken into the first corner, which is never a good sign. But thankfully, this move happened. and <laughs> I mean, not, th not thankfully on their part, but thankfully for me. And uh, it spared me a bit of time and I got back into 14th. So that point of the race wasn't looking good. I was actually going very slowly compared to th those around me. Um, and then from there to the end... It was quite a lonely and forlorn race where I was really thinking, like, why am I so far off the pace? Why am I, why am I so slow? It was quite a weird experience, this one. But I was quite happy just to, to see that final lap board to bring it home and, uh, you know, complete this race and get it over and done with. So that was the end of our final here at Raura. Crossing the line in 14th. And um, there are positives to take from this weekend. But I can tell I can tell you I wasn't completely happy with that race. It's just hard work out there. 
I feel like I feel like I don't know how to drive. I mean, I wasn't last, but at the same time, I was nowhere. So I don't know. It's just frustrating. But yeah, I'm not happy with that. Ultimately. Hello. This is better than carton. You can't just get a dog. Just show your car and get a dog. Now subscribe for more Labrador subscribe content. Subscribe for more dogs. This is a dog channel now. There we go guys, that's the end of this one. It's just so hard driving these things and pretty much everyone I've spoken to says it just takes time. You know, a lot of these guys are out all the time, like every week. From my point of view, we're getting there. The real glimmer of hope was yesterday. We've got within a couple of tenths. So we, we are getting there. I just need to be a bit more consistent and especially when the tires get grippy because my starts are really good when I'm not crashing. So even if the racing wasn't always totally enjoyable because I was a little bit off at times, um, what has been enjoyable is just the whole weekend in general. You know, the people here, uh, especially the other DHR drivers, you know, Tom, I want to give a shout out to Tom Fleming who gave me a lot of advice, um, you know, showed me through the video, the data, really helpful, and just everyone else who I've met here. And of course those Labradors, got to give them a shout out because <laughs> They did uh, change my mood after that final race. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, of course. Fanatec giveaway, but that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time, goodbye.